Hey guys, so I am here today with Gatsby with my very first tagged video and I was tagged by the beautiful Melanie from Mr. Kong's mom which is why Gatsby is going to be in this video for you to kind of chill and do whatever he wants because there's no way I was doing a video tagged by Melanie and not having Gatsby in it. She is the one who will like leave the comment like, hi, I'm just here for him. <laughs> so here he is just for you, girl. And if you have not checked out her channel, I will link it down below. Um, I'm, you should be though. If you're not, I will link it down below. She's awesome. She's as obsessed with candles as all of us are, but she also has phenomenal beauty videos, get ready with me, beauty haul. So this is the fall favorites tag. And now if you see some glowing on me, I have my trusty iPad with um, all the questions, which I'm actually gonna lower the dimmer on. So let's get right into it. It starts with favorite candle. Um, this is like really freaking hard. And actually I'm gonna link a post below. I did a blog post recently on my top five favorite candles. It was really hard for me to narrow it down to like less than that, but I did get it down to three. So let's get right into it. First and foremost is Bath and Body Works Leaves. And this has to be first. This has to be a favorite because this is the one that it's just not fall until I light this candle. It's very apple-y, it's crisp, but you also get some of those other notes like trees and leaves and it just smells like a perfectly wonderful fall day. And like I said, it's just autumn hasn't begun until that candle's been lit. Secondly is Bath and Body Works Marshmallow Fireside. Um, not so much like leaves where it just it doesn't start until I light it, but I just, I love this candle and I can only light it in fall. It really just smells like a bonfire, a fireplace. Mar sweet marshmallows roasting and it just screams fall the first time I ever lit it I was like what is that it smells like Halloween it smells like a nice October night and just ugh, it just puts me in a fall mood like a spooky October night and then third is just I had to put this in here it's Goose Creek's peanut butter sugar it's not the first thing like fall isn't the first thing I think of when I smell this but it came out in the fall I fell in love with it this fall and I know from here on out it's just every time I smell it I'm just gonna think of this fall and buying it in the fall. You see me sweating. It's 30 degrees outside, but my apartment building keeps it like balls hot and I'm just like dying. I have this thick thermal on and it's just really hot. <laughs> so second after candles, where did they go? After candles is favorite lip color. And I have to just be like a typical basic bitch and say Max Whirl. If you can see that. So Whirl is, this is the lip color that Kylie Jenner wears, or at least she wears um, the lip liner of it. I'm not quite sure. I have it on a little bit today, but I always put some kind of gloss over it because I don't like dark, dark, dark. Um, I don't have like the best lips. They're just kind of like whatever. So I don't really highlight my lips. I normally highlight my eyes. Um, so yeah, it's just this like basic brownie. You can see that like that Kylie Jenner color, <laughs> but um. It's, to me, it just screams fall. It sort of washes me out a little bit when I'm too tan. So I do like it when I'm on the paler side. So perfect for fall. Next is favorite drink. So I want to say the Starbucks pumpkin spice latte, but honestly, it's just too sweet for me. I, even like my mom gets it with one pump or my, and my sister gets it iced because the ice can like water down the intensity of that sweetness. But I just... I have to try one every year, but I typically split it with my husband and we get like a small and split it in half and that's more than enough. And to be honest, I feel like I've said this before, maybe in a vlog, but to me, Starbucks is really all about the whipped cream. Like I'm good with their iced coffees, but when it comes to like the pumpkin spice lattes and their flavored drinks, like just give me the whipped cream and a spoon and I'm good because when I'm drinking those hot things, Dan and I split them and it's like once the whipped cream is done, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> that's it so my favorite drink is actually not that I drink this on its own but it is the pumpkin pie spice from International Delight in fat free and sugar free and this is my babe all fall long I love it um I get I'm too this is gonna sound terrible but I'm too lazy to even bother making my own iced coffee I buy the um, unsweetened plain iced coffee from the supermarket the Starbucks one with the green lid and I just put a hefty splash of this in it and this is perfect like this is a pumpkin spice latte for me and it's just like it's not exactly like the Starbucks it's just pure spiciness and you get that like pumpkin spice in your coffee and it's so so good and the fat-free sugar-free I get because it's only 15 calories for one tablespoon 
Whereas the normal international delight, I believe is 30 or 35. So if you're putting in like a hefty dose and a hefty pour can sometimes be up to a quarter of a cup. So if you're putting a quarter of a cup of this in your coffee, you're only getting 60 calories. Whereas if you put two tablespoons of the regular, you're getting like 70 calories. So it's like half the calories or less. Um, zero grams of sugar, three grams of carbs, zero fat. So it's not that bad. I will say though, if your stomach is sensitive, uh, you might want to stay away <laughs> not to be gross but like if you've ever had sugar-free chocolate um, might give you a little little bit of gas if you have a sensitive stomach um, if you don't though go all for it then it's fine <laughs> uh, what's next here favorite blush I'm wearing this now I don't know if you can tell because the lighting kind of sucks and I film on a phone and I just kind of shitted up my makeup today and this is embarrassingly old. You can't even tell the label on it. I don't even know what it's called. There's nothing on the bottom here. This is an old Lorac blush. And it's in this very pretty, like, berry color. And you can see it's, like, all powdery here. What I do is I just take it from the lid. I, like, kind of put it upside down because it's basically, like, a loose powder now. It's, like, not pressed anymore. It doesn't even close all the way. I keep it in a little Ziploc baggie in my makeup case. And that's that. But I love it so much. I haven't parted with it. I haven't thrown it out. And, like, to go buy another one when this is still perfectly fine to use just seems like such a waste of money to me. So I just I keep using it. But it's a really pretty, like, berry, like, oxblood burgundy type of color which I just absolutely adore in the fall it's probably one of my favorite fall colors um, favorite clothing item favorite clothing item hands down it's a tie between two flannels and scarves. This flannel I love, if you can tell, the sleeves are actually a totally different pattern from the shirt part of it. Um, it's not a thumb hole, I just have my thumb through the buttonhole. Hey baby. Because I like to wear my flannels off the shoulders. I like to wear them loose. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. He's just like, he just snuggled up on my lap. I love you so much. Oh, the cuteness. So yeah, I just put, pop my finger through. Because I like to wear my flannels off the shoulder. I like to wear them as like a jacket. Um, not just like a button down, button up flannel shirt. But like a jacket over a tank top. Typically with like leggings, something really cozy, um, or like booty shorts around the house. I just, I love flannels. And then scarves, they're a huge tie. This is probably my all time favorite fall scarf because it is so cozy warm. It is an infinity scarf and you can wear it long just like this or you can wrap it around and you can see it just covers up your entire face. It's massive. It's so huge and it's so, so warm. I adore it. The brand is De Rigueur. De Rigueur. Um, I used to work at Equinox, which if you've never heard of, it's a, um, it's a gym. It's like a high-end gym. So they have a shop with like some nice high-end clothing. And if you work there, you got a really steep discount. It was like 30 or 40% discount. I don't even remember, but it was good. So I got this for a really decent price. And again, it's just, it's so warm. It's so cozy. You can use it as a blanket. I bring this every time I travel. This always comes on the plane with me. I just absolutely adore it. And it's a nice slate gray color. I wear this pretty much daily in the fall. And it's great because you can play it down. I can wear it to work. It goes fine with workout clothes. Some scarves tend to be like too fancy to wear with workout clothes, but this is perfect. But then I can also dress it up. I've worn this with leather leggings and a sweater. I can wear it with jeans. I can wear it with regular leggings. I mean, you name it, you can pair this scarf with it. So that's great. My second favorite scarf is from actually Abercrombie and Fitch years ago, four or five years ago. And it's just your standard red plaid with the fringes on the bottom and you know the one you can just I actually wore this with this exact flannel when I was in San Francisco the other day well I was there last week but I just got back the day before yesterday the night like late last night so I paired these two I do love layering plaids I do love this plaid scarf with flannels I just think it looks so cute so yeah this is pretty much how I was running around San Francisco because it was chilly cold there and then my other favorite I don't need, um, guys, I'm not going to pick it up because Gatsby is snuggling with it and it's too cute. Um, maybe at the end of the video, if he gets up, I'll show you. But it's similar to this. It's a red plaid, only it's red and black. Um, and it's like a poncho. Okay, next is 
Favorite fall movie. I was thinking about this when I saw every, when I've been seeing everyone's video. I'm like, how is everyone saying it? Like, this is so hard. I guess number one, I would have to say Nightmare Before Christmas. And that's just because it's such a classic. I've loved that movie since I was a little, little kid. My sister and I used to watch it together. We knew every word, not only to every song, but every word to the entire movie. Like, beginning to end and then of course if you see my arms moving I'm just petting and scratching Gatsby he's sitting on my lap and it's just mm. um Hocus Pocus because ugh, again just love 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 that movie but then I also love your classic horror movies I love the Halloween movies Nightmare on Elm Street like I just ugh, I love them all I love them all like I think I forgot what channel it is it's just always playing like the Halloween horror movies back to back and I just can watch that like all day all night in October I love it. I don't like like the new and the Exorcist. I love that movie too. Um, I don't like like the newer Halloween movies or horror movies in general, with the exception maybe of Saw. But I really love those like old school classic horror movies. Those are my jam. Um, and I love watching ABC Family's Thirteen Nights of Halloween. You can always find good movies on there. So and ABC Family's owned by Disney, so they do like to play Hocus Pocus a lot. Oh, he got up. So let me show you this poncho thing. It's massive, and this is why he's snuggling on it, because it is such a warm blanket thing, so you can see. It's just like a giant scarf, and this is what it looks like when you're wearing it. It covers your arms, it comes down. Again, it's got the fringes on it. I love wearing this on its own with a tank top, leggings, and my gray hunter boots, or I also like wearing this under a leather jacket. It looks really, really cute with these things just hanging out from under the jacket. It's like a really like chic type of boho look, and that is just so my style and it's just it's huge it's huge it is it is a blanket it is and I just I love it I love it Dan and I can both fit under here hey baby you want to come back in here you want to come oh my god um okay moving on um favorite fall TV show so I guess there's a oh yeah it's coming back snuggle on it couple so most excited about the affair my husband and I fell in love with that show when the first season was on I mean in love it is so good the acting is just amazing the writing is brilliant it, it's on Showtime um, if you have it you oh you have to watch it it's there he is. Oh, I love you say hi oh my god look at the cuteness We've been away all week, and he's been so snuggly since we got back. Like, he's just so happy to have his family back. And he was with my in-laws, and they take such good care of him. And my mother-in-law was so sad. She was like, I'm going to have Gatsby withdrawals. And you could tell he was so sad when we were leaving. Like, he had gotten so used to, like, being around them and their routine. But now today, he's just so snuggly, and it's just the cutest ever. So yeah, so The Affair, it's just, it's so good. If you have not seen it, you have to watch it. And it's funny, I was talking to one of my friends at work and we were having this exact discussion, like what fall TVs are you looking forward to? Cause she's like obsessed with Scandal. And I'm like, well, I haven't seen Scandal, but you need to watch The Affair. And she was like, why would I watch something called The Affair? That's like, that's terrible. That's terrible. Why would I want to see, watch something about people cheating on each other? I'm happily married. That doesn't come off as judgy. I don't know what does, but I was like, cool. Does that does that make me weird? Does that mean I have fantasies about cheating on my husband? I don't think so. I think it's just a good TV show. Um, can someone leave me a comment down below which side you agree with? Do you feel like that? Do you feel uncomfortable or awkward watching a fair type of situations or are you just like, it's a TV show and I'm perfectly disconnected with that and that's fine? <laughs> I'm just, I'm curious. But um, it's not just about the affair. There's like a murder storyline, and it like flash, flashes forward from past to pre uh, from past to present, like going through this um, murder mystery case, and then it's split in half. So you have the viewpoint of each person having the affair. The first season was from the two people having the affair, like their perspective from their marriage and with each other. And now on season two, you're getting four perspectives, two people in the affair and the now ex-wife and ex-husband that were both cheated on. 
So it's just like an all around take on this like fucked up situation and it's such a great show. And it's set in Montauk and Brooklyn and I think what Dan and I really enjoyed about it was the scenery. It's like so, it captures Montauk so perfectly you feel like you're there. Like you're on vacation and just there on the beach. So great show. And then I also recently, on the plane back from California actually, I downloaded it and I watched all the recent episodes of Scream Queens. Oh my gosh, freaking hysterical, hysterical, like crying, laughing like a fool on the plane, like people are staring at me like what is going on over there, I'm like I'm just watching Scream Queens and it's funny as well hell, it's, I mean it's just, it's so stupid, it's so ridiculous, the storyline is just absurd, <laughs> like the things that happen are absurd and make no sense, but like it's just so funny. You just, you have to watch it. It's so over the top and dramatic and hysterical. It's, I think it's the creators of Glee and American Horror Story. So like as far as the gory scenes of it, like if you cannot handle gore, if you can't handle horror, even though it's a comedy, don't watch it because there were some scenes and like I'm a horror type of somewhat buff and like I love, like I love gory movies some of these scenes even got to me and this is just on fox it's not like it's but yeah some of the scenes i was like <laughs> so, so be a little cautious going into it and i won't even go into details in case you get queasy i'm just telling you if you do get queasy if gory type of things gross you out maybe don't watch it okay what else is here favorite thanksgiving food i hope my mom's not watching it's between two sorry mom but my mother-in-law's stuffing, oh my god, it's the best thing I've ever tasted. She makes two trays. One tray is hidden because that other tray is for Dan and I to take home to eat after Thanksgiving because there's no leftovers. It's that good. So she has to make like two and put it aside for us. It's just, it's comfort in a dish and it's just, it's perfect. It's perfection. It's everything stuffing should be it's the best stuffing I've ever had and she just oh she's amazing I love it so much and then the second which is just a total tie is my mom's pumpkin pie it's just not Thanksgiving unless I've had my mom's pumpkin pie again it's like nothing else I've ever had she just does it perfectly um, I don't even think it's like a recipe it's just her own thing she the way she's like combined certain recipes take out taken out things she didn't like brought in more things that she did like and it's perfect she like sticks my mom will change things like my mom's stuffing is never the same she'll make a cornbread stuffing a sausage stuffing like she makes different things every year but one consistency is her pumpkin pie because you don't mess with perfection and it is perfection um what else is here favorite halloween costume i will insert a picture um it was when i was in college i was a sophomore in college I believe yeah because I know I was under 21 because I had to use a fake ID to get to the party we were going to <laughs> um, yeah I think I was 19 19 or no I think I, I might have been 19 19 or 20 one or the other I don't know I think I was 19 though but Dan and I were vampires it was the year that um, True Blood had come out and I will insert a picture right here Yeah, we were vampires and Dan's face, it, it was so funny. And what it was is like, he's so not into like makeup and like Halloween stuff and I love it. I'm all about like makeup, making my own costume from scratch, even though that costume was pretty much just lingerie <laughs> with some really cool makeup. And Dan was basically my victim. Like all he let me do was like the two little dots. And it was pretty funny because we went to this big Halloween party at like a catering hall and the guy like the bouncer checking us in he was like she comes like this like done up from the feet to the head he's like and all you get is two little dots on your neck <laughs> so that was pretty funny because he had taken his fangs out because they were bothering him but we started off with fangs so right here i will insert a picture of the makeup that i did on us halloween makeup is my shit I love it so much. I mean, all of my Halloween costumes I love, but that had to be one of my hands down favorite because it was just so perfect. And we got stopped so many times that night. We got so many compliments. It was such a great costume. Um, and that is it. So Gatsby, say, say goodbye, you cute little thing.
Goodbye. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this obnoxiously long video, but a little different than candles. Talking about a lot of stuff I love. This was fun. So, Melanie, thank you for tagging me. I think all of my YouTube friends on here have already done it. <laughs> um, if you haven't done it yet, then I tag you. Get in the fun. Do it. So, it actually was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. That was fun. My first tag. All right, guys. I'll see you in my next video. And thank you for watching. Bye.